What is up, fellow Pyro fanatics? This has been Thaddy28 here. And uh, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of an uh, inf informative video in regards to uh, the uh, fake ball shells and um, in terms of their composition in regards to, like, compared to the actual true one-inch uh, artillery shells. Now, I did a few uh, videos last year in regards to the potential uh, demise of the ball shell at some point in the near future in regards to maybe within the next five years or so now um and in that in those one of those videos i discussed how uh these fake ball shells uh contain less composition uh compared to these one inch uh artillery shells because um when you take this uh fake uh these two spheres off and you see the the actual one inch uh artillery shell underneath it's actually a little bit smaller uh in terms of how it's built compared to this uh one inch artillery shell now i've had uh several people uh try to tell me or make the claim that these artillery shells are pretty much similar in terms of composition and in terms of how hard their brakes are in terms of the effects and i'm uh, why well, my intention with this video is to prove that that is not the case and um it's why I'm kind of lobbying uh, to just, you know, if if you're going to sell or if you're going to make, should I say, make shells like this and it has contains less composition, you might as well just, you might as well just use these type of shells and just make these shells, you know, instead of going through the hassle of, of trying to produce a shell like this and make it appear like as if it's a regular 1.75 inch true ball shell. So, um, I'm going to compare... This shell, which is the uh, from the Shogun Crackling Artillery Shell Kit. I don't have the uh, the box with me anymore, but this is where, where this shell comes from. Um, I'm going to be comparing it to these uh, Ammo Bobber shells by um, AFW. And I'm also going to be uh, also taking uh, one of these shells from the Maddox uh, Black Box Artillery Shell Kit. I'll be opening up these shells... And I'll be comparing the composition between uh, these fake ball shells. And then I'll compare it to the composition in, in this 1-inch uh, ammo bomber shell. So uh, I have my uh, styrofoam cups here handy. And I've never really done this before. I don't really like to dissect fireworks. Um, but this is mainly to kind of drive the whole point home in regards to these shells just do not perform as good as, as these 1-inch shells. Um, and to kind of kind of toss out the whole idea that they're both uh, they have the same composition, which is not the case. So we're gonna find out uh, exactly what the uh, true uh, amount of composition is uh, between these shells and figure out uh, for sure if these shells are considerably less than the true one inch uh, canister shells. So give me a sec here. I'm gonna have to see how about trying to kind of set up my phone while I'm kind of opening up these shells so uh, bear with me all right guys so we got the uh the shogun shell here I'm gonna try to kind of take it apart here in front of the camera the setup that I have here for the camera is kind of awkward so bear with me if I don't get the uh the shot in where I'm kind of opening these shells up I do apologize there we go so we're going to open up uh, this shell here. Now you see here you got the tape. There we go. And you see here, you got the, uh, the top sphere. You got the one inch shell underneath. All right, guys. So uh, pretty much uh, took the uh, black powder out from the uh, from the Shogun Crackling Artillery shell. So uh, we're gonna measure um, how many uh, grams of black powder we have, and here it is, right here. So we got our scale here. And comes out to about four grams. All 
So we're going to um, take apart the the rest of this shell. So we pretty much took out the uh, black powder. Now we got to get to the uh, composition. So uh, I'm going to have to kind of pause the video. I can't kind of do all this while I'm with the camera. I don't, I don't really have much of a stand. I'll all right, guys. So uh, real quick, just to compare, um, got the uh, the two shells here. You got the real one-inch shell. This is from the ammo bomber, and this is the uh, fake ball shell from the uh, Shogun artillery shell. As you see here, the ammo bomber is clearly uh, bigger than the um, than the uh, Shogun shell, as you see here, in terms of length and uh, diameter. Okay, guys. So pretty much uh, took apart the uh, Shogun shell. And here are the uh, the spheres that you see on the top at the bottom and the bottom of the shell. They pretty much surround the actual one-inch shell. Uh, I pretty much I, I remember showing you guys uh, this last year when I took apart one of the shells. All I did was just take apart the uh, the outside part of it, which was these spheres and the paper. So uh, took apart the the top of the shell, and here was the uh, the clay plug that was uh, pretty much at the top of it, and Here's the rest of it, and here's the, uh, the bottom along with the, uh, the fuse, the launch fuse. So, And uh, here's pretty much the composition. Um, some nice size balls in it. Measurement here. All right. And these cups are pretty much, they are very, very light. So and my, my, my scale doesn't really go by uh, tenths, so I can't really get the weight of the cup out. So this is going to be pretty much like a, a guesstimate Maybe between Less than it's probably going to be less than a half a gram Maybe like a quarter of a gram maybe in terms of the, the weight of these cups. So quarter gram or so kind of all right, so For the Shogun shell we got seven grams of composition along with four grams of the black powder Which uh, brings it up to 11 grams. So all right now we're gonna take apart this ammo bomber shell and see what uh, see what's in here all right before I get to opening up this shell I just want to point out that this is shell number three from the ammo bomber uh, shell kit so just so you guys know okay guys so we got the uh, the black powder for the um, the ammo bomber shell I don't know if you guys can see it clear enough I'm trying to get it as close as possible Now we're gonna check out the uh, the weight of this one, and it comes out to five grams. All right, so about one gram or so more than the uh, the amount that was in the uh, Shogun uh, shell. All right, guys. So it took out, uh, or should I say, took apart the ammo bomber uh, number three shell. And uh, here's pretty much what the uh, composition looks like. The balls are a little bit uh, bigger on this one. The stars, should I say, not the balls, but the, st the stars are a little bit bigger on this one than uh, any other one. Here's, this is the ammo bomber. And here is the, uh, the shell gun shell. Just maybe about a quarter bigger, maybe a third bigger. All right, so uh, I'm gonna weigh this uh, weigh this one and see. Let's see uh, what it comes out to. All right, we got 13 grams plus five. That makes it uh, about 18 grams. So 18 grams compared to, I believe it was 11 grams for the uh, Shogun shell. So that's about seven seven gram difference, six to seven gram difference. So that's a pretty significant difference. So this pretty much is my point about, you know, these fake ball shells. You know, people are trying to play it off as well. They're the same as the one-inch shells. They just make it convenient for you to be able to put them in the DR-11 tubes, which is the tubes that you use uh, for 1.75-inch uh, ball shells as well as the 60-gram uh, canister shells. So, but that is not true. Uh, these shells, they don't perform nearly as well as the ammo bomber i've lit off the ammo bomber and i've done them on my channel here before and they were pretty decent for one inch uh canister shells i mean they're not 
what you'd say the prototypical ball shell is. I mean, ball shells, in terms of composition, they will range anywhere from about 15 to 30 grams uh, in just composition alone. Uh, with the black powder, it probably comes out to about 35 or so, 35 to 40 maybe. Um, but for the most part, 30 is probably 25 to 30 is probably a, a decent ball shell and most of the average ball shells out there is probably around 20 to 25 maybe 20 the lower end scale and these ammo bomber shells are close to what you know artillery the average artillery shell pretty much looks like but really you can only fit so much composition into those one inch uh one inch shells i mean the 18 grams that this one uh, has probably maxed the limit for the room inside that shell it may might be able to carry another two grams or so but that's probably about it maybe one or two grams so it, 20 is probably the maximum for these shells in terms of the amount of composition that you could put inside of them but for a ball shell that number increases by 10 15 grams and that's a significant difference all right guys so uh here's uh, one of these uh black box uh, Maddox artillery shells, or should I say Maddox black box artillery shells? So I'm gonna take in, I'm gonna be taking this apart, and uh, I'm gonna pretty much uh, weigh the black powder and the composition, and uh, we'll see if this uh, is a, either weighs more or less than the uh, the Shogun crackling artillery that I weighed uh, before the uh, the ammo bomber shell. All right, guys. So uh, just took out the, uh, the black powder from the, uh, the Maddox artillery shell. The black box artillery shell so let me try to see if i can let you guys see what it looks like up close there it is so we got five grams of black powder so it's pretty much uh same as the uh, shogun shell sorry the uh the ammo bomber shell it appears all right guys so i finally took apart the uh, rest of the uh maddox artillery shell so here's what it looks like the uh here's what the stars look like and i'd say they might be this just about the same size as the um the shogun shell maybe a tad bigger Here's a close-up shot. Right. Okay, so now we're gonna now we're gonna check out the composition in terms of the weight. All right, we got seven grams on this one and five with the black powder, meaning uh, twelve grams total, about between eleven and twelve. So. Again, with the uh, the other one, uh, the uh, the ammo bomber was about seven, 17, 18 grams. So it uh, it's about a six gram difference between the between the two fake ball shells and the one inch canister shell, which is doesn't have any spheres around it to give it the illusion that it's a ball shell. So all right, so. For the fake ball shells, we come out to around, as I mentioned before, 11 to 12 grams of composition total. For the for the ammo bomber, we come out to about 17 to 18 grams total. The black powder for the uh, Shogun artillery shell, I believe, was about 4 grams. The ammo bomber and the uh, black box Maddox shell are 5 grams. So the uh, and I remember the composition for the uh, the Maddox uh, was 7 grams as well as the composition for the Shogun Crackling Artillery, so they're both 7 grams. The composition for the uh, Ammo Bomber is about 13 grams. So we're looking at... We're looking at twice the power. We're looking at twice the brake size, twice the uh, size of uh, the effects. So there is a noticeable difference. Um, as I mentioned before, the average ball shell usually comes anywhere between... It's a pretty big scale between 15 to 30 grams uh, total so the ammo bomber is definitely the closest to what a regular ball shell would be the obviously the uh, the issue with the ammo bomber is that you cannot use the 
regular DR11 tubes, uh, DR11 or HDBE tubes, uh, to use those shells, you're going to have to use the tubes, the cardboard tubes that come in the box. So yeah, there it is. Um, again, it's I'm not really too surprised about this. Um, I just I, I wanted to put the the rest of the notion that these shells are all the same. They have the same composition. Uh, there's no difference. The ball shells better because you get the two spheres around the shell and you can put them inside the tube. If they're being sold at the same price, go with the ammo bomber. Go with the not just the ammo bomber, but go with one inch artillery shells in general. It's it's more powerful. Not like you know ridiculous power like but it's the closest you'll get to a regular uh artillery shell at least ball shells before they were uh pretty much uh taken out of production for the most part um, as i mentioned there are a few shells out there that are still true ball shells you got the depth alone shells over there um as well as uh, fixing the fire although they've been watered down um but there really uh, isn't much else to say about this other than this is pretty much the the way of the future, so to speak, or wave of the future, whatever term you want to use. Um, and this is pretty much what's going to be upon us uh, within the next five years or so. So if you can find good ball shells, buy them, if, especially if you get them for a good deal. I'd get them while you can uh, because I, I don't see, unless... And in this, there's only saving grace. The only way this could be averted and factories go back to producing ball shells is if uh, the companies decide to move to different countries and and uh, build factories because uh, uh, to make fireworks. Just because the, the cost of raw materials in China is really going up every year now. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the prices of fireworks keep going up every year, and it, it may get to a point where they're going to have to start uh, moving production to different countries just to bring the cost down. And that is the only way I see uh, the ball shell being potentially spared. Meaning that if it won't cost as much, um, then they'll probably continue to produce uh, the ball shell in terms of the raw materials. It does cost more to make the ball shell, but if it's uh, if the raw materials are cheap enough to where they could produce it and still make a decent profit on it, um, I don't see why they wouldn't uh, want to continue selling ball shells if there isn't. If there is still a huge market for it, which I believe there is. I know a lot of people have their debate between whether ball shells are useless now, considering 60 gram canister shells are like all over the place. The, the market is saturated with 60 gram cans. So uh, there's that whole notion of, well, there's no use for ball shells. Well, in my opinion, there is. The symmetrical break to me is is, is important. And uh, even though, you know, most consumers just want something as loud as possible and it doesn't matter what it, the size or the shape looks like as long as it it emits an effect in the sky and it's loud they're okay with it but for hobbyists people who want to produce a, a particularly a good looking show they want those uh, symmetrical breaks in their show and the only shells that have that can do that is the ball shell so so yeah that's pretty much it i uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this very informative video and uh probably the only time i'll be dissecting fireworks at least for a while and uh i'll see you guys next time